We are really excited to be with you this afternoon, and we are so grateful for the time that you are giving us to share a little bit more about Learning Blade, and um, particularly uh, for our states where it is available. You guys will talk about that. Uh, before we really jump into today's agenda, I would like to make sure that you know that tomorrow there is our actual user group meeting that many of you may have seen this as part of that. And we have educators and leaders in STEM from all across the country that will be joining us tomorrow from 4.30 to 6.30 uh, Eastern time. Um, Kirby Johnson, who's our chief of staff, she's on here as well. She'll make sure to put the link into the chat box if you have not registered for that and would like to join. We'd love to have you. We're going to have great speakers like the head of computer science for the state of Arkansas, the head of career and technical education for the state of South Carolina, someone from the governor's office in Alabama, uh, some teachers, some real practitioners and educators who will share with you um, how they're using what we're going to show you today. So hopefully you guys can join us and appreciate that. For today's webinar, um, we're gonna give you a little overview to Learning Blade um, for those of you that may or may not have used Learning Blade before. And we're going to kind of then go into the platform, show you the student experience and the teacher experience so you can really understand some of the power behind Learning Blade. And then we're going to ha have an opportunity for questions and comments. Um, I think Joshua, do we wanna start with a poll? Yeah, let's let me throw okay. a poll up there real quick. Okay, so I think we're asking you, have you ever used Learning Blade in your classroom? Okay, it's moving all around about 50-50, going a little bit more toward no, which is great. Well, not great that you haven't used it, but great that you're going to learn about it today. <laughs> so, great. Okay, well, thank you so much for, I see that probably about two to one who have used it and, um, and those that haven't. So here's a little bit of the results there. So thanks so much for that. Um, so if we wanna talk about Learning Blade, I think it's really important uh, for, for, at least from our perspective and hopefully for you guys as well, to understand a little bit about why Learning Blade was even created in the first place. Um, Joshua mentioned that I am an engineer by training and as is my husband, Dane, who we were the founders of Learning Blade, and we have been really excited to see the way that it has grown across the country. But one thing we wanted to say is that, you know, during this pandemic, a lot of things have gone, you know, uh, awry, but the demand for computer science and STEM workers is still growing. It's probably even higher than it was pre-pandemic. Um, given the fact that, you know, we've had a lot of changes and a lot more technology is needed. But one thing we like to highlight is that this is not just about four-year degree, but it is also about great careers that can be gained by having a two-year certificate program or a two-year community college or technical college degree. So, you know, we really, in Learning Blade, try to feature a very wide variety of careers that we'll show you. And that is, I think, something very important. The second piece is women and minorities are underrepresented in the STEM workspace. 50% um, of our workforce is women, uh, and we are only 26% of the STEM workforce. Similar numbers for the minority. I think what was crazy last night watching the news, and maybe you guys have heard this, in December, 160,000 jobs were lost by women, and 16,000 jobs were gained by men. I mean, you have to almost hear that again. 150,000 jobs were lost by women and 16,000 jobs were gained by men. Now for STEM careers, guys, this is an opportunity to flip it. Women can be very, very successful in the STEM space and computer science space, and we've got to keep pushing it back. Um, we heard today that only, what was it, 3%, Joshua, of African-American or Black children pursue computer science after high school. 3%. Lots of work to do here, guys. And the big, big pool of candidates, women, minorities, you know, we've really got a chance. But what was alarming to us is when we looked at the number of kids who were prepared and interested for STEM in ACT's uh, graduation data, 21% were interested and prepared for STEM. Sure, off they go. 23% of kids had great math skills, but they weren't interested in STEM. 
and don't want to forget about the other buckets. But really for us, that was really important um, to note that, you know, all we need to do was get kids interested. Okay, so I know we aren't going to open mics, but if you guys quickly want to say, why do you think kids weren't interested? Just type it into the chat box if you want to take a second and do that. We'll see what people are saying quickly. Why are kids not interested in STEM? Lack, well, number eight, number one answer was number one right. <laughs> Lack of exposure. So again, you know, that is the number one reason. It's like almost so simple. They just don't know about them. You can't be what you can't see, right? And so, you know, that was the, really the thing that to us was like, wow, we got to get kids more familiar with what STEM and computer science careers look like. But we also understood we couldn't boil the ocean. And so more research showed us that middle school was really that critical time where kids were making their career related decisions. Now, this doesn't mean that they were deciding on their career, but the classes they took, the things they do after school, even who they hang around, all of that bakes into how their career path was. This was further validated by a study that came out that said 42% of Americans would have considered STEM courses if they just better understood the career paths. So again, just, you know, validating this. So what we did with Learning Blade is we decided to look at it and present these careers in the form of what we call missions and really looking at a way to engage students a little bit differently than maybe had been done in the past. So we started with about eight or nine, we're up to now 12 different missions that focus on a wide range of what we call career clusters, or you might be familiar with that from the Department of Labor. But if we look at, we look at biomedical and construction and medicine and agriculture, you know, a lot of times we don't think about agriculture, but we've got to feed the earth and we've got to be thinking innovatively about that but manufacturing, um, computer science, of course, and defining STEM very broadly, we look at definitely finance and other things that really do require some STEM skills. We also picked a storyline to kind of design the mission around. So as you can see, each of these storylines has some kind of a, a way that this is impacting society. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. Each of our missions includes sort of what we call our toolbox uh, of lesson and activities. So our really central component is our interactive online lessons. This allows kids to interact with content and that is aligned to all 50 states academic standards. And Josh was gonna get to take you into the system. You can see these live. Beyond this, we developed some, what we call challenge projects. Most people call those project-based learning. And one thing that we tried to do a little bit differently is we didn't want to really burden schools with having to buy a lot of expensive equipment to do the types of examples and experiments that they needed to. So we really scratched our head to develop very simple, easy to use uh, materials that would actually use common materials that you have in the classroom. So again, teaching something like force in physics or whatever with pencils, rulers, and pennies you know, really trying to use things that people have in the classroom so they didn't have to spend a lot of money to integrate hands-on learning. Our design thinking lessons employs the five-step design thinking process. Again, a way to help students think innovatively about problems that they're trying to solve. You know, I speak to a lot of students as a woman engineer, and I always tell people like, being an engineer, let me go out and do anything pretty much I wanted to. And I think that's the thing we're trying to drive here is giving kids the ability to solve problems. Our 3D printing activities do require uh, a 3D printer, obviously. But one thing we found across the country is schools were getting 3D printers, but a lot of teachers really didn't know how to do much more than printing maybe a paperweight. And so we decided, you know what, let's look at this a little bit differently. Let's let kids use some of these online. There are a lot of resources that are online to design something, to print it, and then to actually do an experiment with it. This became almost a soup to nuts, really advanced manufacturing opportunity. 
Now, of course, if you don't have a 3D printer, it's a little more difficult to do. But what's great is we have a partnership with Flash Forge, the 3D printing company. And if you complete a certain number of lessons and learning blade, you actually earn a free 3D printer. If there's anybody on here that's already learned one, I'm probably since it's 101, we might not have anybody. But if we do, we've given hundreds of those away across the country. And we get pictures and stories all the time about the use of those. We also have career videos that allow you to see sort of the real life people in these careers. And of course, our parent discussions during the pandemic have been very utilized. You know, we wanted parents to be able to engage with their kids. In fact, I think Joshua actually told me this story that his daughters have been home. He has three darling daughters. Mine are darling too, but they're grown. So they're not at home, thankfully. That's the one thing I've been happy about in the pandemic. Um, but he was telling me, you know, my daughter is on all day on her Zoom, but she never really has anything to engage me in. And so, you know, this is where our parent discussions have been very, very well used by those schools that have pushed these out, because these are hands on uh, opportunities, really an opportunity for any parent has zero STEM background to first have a conversation with their child. We call it table talk. Then maybe even using their phone if they don't have Internet at home or if they do to do a little research, and then what we call our kitchen sink experiments, which again are very, very simple step-by-step -step experiments that kids can do with their parents. Um, our coding is a little bit different in that we offer some resources to help step-by-step -step use some of the code.org materials. You know, code.org is the pinnacle in ways to really integrate coding into your classroom. But if you don't have a coding background, they can be somewhat daunting. So we worked with actually nationally with the Boy Scouts to develop some lessons that would allow you to do this. We de-Boy Scouted them and put them into Learning Blade. Our last piece is our paper craft. Um, my kids are too old to know about this, but apparently Minecraft is a big deal. And so our paper craft lessons allow students to actually print out and build kind of an origami and learn about the different careers and the technologies that are within Learning Blade. Why Learning Blade now? Of course, you know, Learning Blade pre-pandemic was very important. Learning Blade during the pandemic has been very important. And Learning Blade after pandemic will still be important. But what we found is that, you know, Learning Blade is effective because you don't have to have a tremendous amount of teacher intervention to utilize the resource. It, we provide tremendous, very powerful student reports that allow you to see how your students are performing. And more recently, we have some alternatives specifically for those without internet access. We've heard from teachers all over the country that use this, even calling it a lifesaver during this pandemic time. You know, when the pandemic hit last year, we really were worried about the digital divide becoming more divided. There is no other way to put it. We are not gonna snap our fingers. I don't care how much stimulus money comes out to get internet into every home in the United States. It is going to be like electricity. But when that happened, we realized, you know what? We as curriculum providers have to meet people halfway. And so what we hunkered down and got our great creative team um, to build what we call now our backpack app. This is a game changer. So if you don't hear anything else today, hear this. If schools have Chromebooks, and the majority of them do, you can now, when you have a license to Learning Blade, download our interactive online lessons onto the Chromebooks. Then students who do not have internet access can go home and use the lessons when they're offline. When they come back to school or at a hotspot or McDonald's, wherever, they can then automatically upload their results. It will automatically, they don't even have to do it. Um, I can tell you in Missouri, I think there's some people on, there's a wonderful teacher, you're gonna hear from her tomorrow in our users group, Amy Polanowski. She uses Backpack with 140 students right now. And she said something to us that we didn't even realize. She said, you know what, two things. One, even we use Backpack even when we're in school now, because can you imagine 140 kids on the internet in a school where they may not have that fast of a line into their high-speed internet. So that does not tax their internet. And two, it helped her to lock down the, the Chromebook so that students weren't playing on games or doing other things. So again, just a really exciting development for us. Um, 
as well. Of course, now let's talk, you know, more nuts and bolts about Learning Blade. You know, this was really designed to be a supplemental system. Um, there are many states and many teachers that use this for a class, but our design was really to make it supplemental and bite-sized chunks that you could use throughout any different type of implementation. Um, it is designed really to help those underrepresented students, but it is valuable for everybody. And it, in, it, it really in, introduces kids to a wide range of STEM and technologies and careers engaging them and when you'll get to see it, it's kind of a game-based platform, not the shoot them up kind of that kind of game, but really a, a gaming features. Um, we do have some of those downloadable resources that I told you are for the teachers and specifically for girls. You know, AUW did a study and said, girls, we like career paths where we're helping people. Quite frankly, now all millennials do. So when you saw the contextualization of our Learning Blade missions, we really tried to tug on someone's heart a little bit to get them interested in this. We also said, you know what, just because you're good in English and social studies doesn't mean that you could not pursue a STEM career. So we also said, you know what, let's not just make science and math lessons in this, let's put English and social studies so we can get all hands on deck when we're in a school being utilized so that our English teachers and our social studies teachers can engage in this conversation as well. As I mentioned earlier, we have aligned this to all 50 states academic standards. This is redone every single year. So you have the most recent standards for each of our states are in our system. We also have our materials. As I mentioned, middle school was at critical time. So we made our materials really for fifth through ninth grade primarily. Our sweet spot is definitely seventh and eighth. And we have a hundred hours of online interactive lessons and another 100 hours of the offline downloadable lesson plans. So suffice it to say, we have a lot of stuff. I always tell people there's two things, good and bad about learning late. One is the good thing is we have a lot of stuff. The bad thing is we have a lot of stuff. So sometimes it can be overwhelming. And so that's why we encourage you to just explore and you know, use, utilizing any part of Learning Blade brings value to your students. And Sheila, if I can just add right there Absolutely. real quick, uh, which is that's what tomorrow's all about. Hearing different teachers talk about the different ways they've used Learning Blade uh, for project-based learning, for computer science, for rural students, for, um, you know, for a variety of ways of engaging their students. So I think uh, yep. That's that's really today we're introducing you the program, but tomorrow's about hearing those practitioners and their experiences. Exactly, exactly. So as we mentioned, you know, this was really designed to, um, you know, contextualize learning for students, as well as reinforcing those academic standards for teachers. We know we're not going to get airtime in the classroom if we didn't help meet the needs of what educators have. And I would like to add, during this pandemic, our healthcare workers have been our heroes, but you educators have been even more heroes. One day you're in school, the next day you're remote, the next day you're back, you don't even know what you're doing next week. So just really, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, I would just thank you for, for what you have been able to do. So this is a sample of one of our missions, um, happened to choose a flu outbreak. Obviously we had this before COVID, but what we offer is the ability for you to see what we call tools and teammates. So our tools on the orange circles are STEM technologies. Our teammates are STEM careers, which are in the green. And what we wanted to do was engage kids with some content that would hopefully introduce them to these tools and teammates. And so we have interactive lessons. They're about 10 to 15 minutes in social studies, math, science, and English. Each of these are, again, about 10 to 15 mini academic lessons. Again, for our Twitter generation, you know, we, don't, we want them to get that positive feedback quickly. And so that is how this works. So for each of our missions, we have roughly five tools and five teammates. Um, we also have, as I mentioned earlier, agriculture. You know what? We've got to feed our earth. We've got to make sure we're doing that. So getting kids to understand, you know, they could be involved in an agricultural career. And, and remember, farming is not your grandfather's farming. Manufacturing is not your grandfather's manufacturing or your grandmother's manufacturing. I'm equal opportunity. But, you know, it is really different now. And so making sure that people see and particularly our students see the value of adding and being part of this. 
Our intro to computer science course is a little bit different. It is a subset of some of the computer science material we have in this. But, you know, I think some of you are probably in Arkansas, but uh, Governor Hutchison, who is just a wonderful governor for the state of Arkansas, really uh, stood up and said, you know what, I'm going to be the computer science governor. Many governors have followed him along. But what they have been able to do and is really look at the ways that computer science is impacting. And, and to be honest, almost all careers require some kind of computer science knowledge. So we developed the computer science course in Learning Blade that allows you in about two hours to be able to really do a quick introduction to a variety of things in computer science. Now, we're not, make, we're not teaching coding here. We're really more teaching the understanding of what are the subsets of information that you need to understand to be dealing in cybersecurity, very, very important, or, uh, you know, interface design, you know, Joshua is a say, that's teacher, like, you know what a UI UX designer is, and not, not a lot of teachers will be able to answer that. So really an opportunity to help you and your students understand that. Again, these are aligned to the tech standards of our states. We also offer a lot of engineering careers. Again, you know, just making sure you understand there's a wide range of materials in Learning Blade that can really fit nicely into the different aspects of education. And kids can really either select a mission or teachers can assign a specific mission. This is sort of what our menu looks like. Again, very menu driven, very easy to use. Um, hopefully you feel that way as well, but you know, really allowing any teacher with relatively little to no background in STEM can actually use this course or these materials to deliver a robust experience. The kids will operate the mission from a dashboard, we call it. Again, sort of having a little gaming look to it with the way that we show them the missions they've completed, the mission scores they have, their tools and teammates that they earn. And if you saw, you know, we had about five, as I mentioned, tools and teammates for each of our missions. This, that is a full mission. We also offer what we call our express mission, which is a pared down version of our full missions that take about roughly two hours. Our full missions take about eight to 10 hours. So you can kind of use these, engage them the way in which it works best for your classroom. Um, students are introduced to these careers in Learning Blade while reviewing their academics. Again, interactivity, having fill in the blank or drag and drop or multiple choice, all different kinds of interactions. Because again, we're allowing the student to control the progress. So, you know, when you have kids that are very fast and they can do things, you're not slowing them down because they can move fast in Learning Blade. And the other students that are a little bit slower can take their time. We offer a full soundtrack. You're going to get to see all these things. And, you know, it's really important. You might have heard personalized learning is a big thing, and particularly during this pandemic, we definitely know that that's important. So this is another way to have personalized learning for your students. Um, kids can also track their own performance. You know, some people's kids want to do that, some don't. Again, you know, the features we show you are things you can use, they're not required. So it's an opportunity if kids really want to, some of your, you know, type A personality kids might want to see how they're doing. So they can certainly use this as well. And as I mentioned earlier, all our lessons are aligned to the academic standards. So when you're in the Learning Blade system as a teacher, you will be able to select your state and then the standards will show up based on your state standards. This is also really great for you all as educators to have a place where you can even learn a little bit more about what the standards are. And what I love about it, 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 it allows you to actually even target your learning. You know, when you pull up a standards report in Learning Blade, it will show you where you may have very low scores for your overall class, because you can either have students as individuals or you can have them as a class, and it will actually show you uh, where students might not be being so successful with certain standards. That informs your own instruction. So again, just having a really great opportunity to share uh, a little bit about what Learning Blade can do for you. Um, the rural impact, of course, you know, it's very, very strong. 
for our rural communities, many of the states, really all states have some rural areas. And so we wanted to be sure that we could provide a resource that would be effective for rural, but really it's for urban as well. I mean, nowadays it's really across the board. It is a robust STEM experience. It's supplemental again, and it complements many other things that you're doing. And there is a flexible path uh, platform that you'll get to see as well. And you can use it as a whole class lesson. Some of the teachers you're going to hear from tomorrow, if you're able to join us for the users group, we'll talk about how they have actually designed classes now that learning blade is the core component. Um, again, as we mentioned, this will work offline where you do not have internet access for students. Okay, so this is all well and good, but is it being used and are we having success that we can actually uh, document and study? It, we have delivered over 4.5 million online lessons, 4.5 million across the United States in the last few years. I, there are very few resources that might even be able to talk about that. So we're very proud and appreciative of all of our partners and all of our states that are, are working to deliver this curriculum. We also have, really think it's important that we continue to study and verify that we are doing what we set out to do. So what we found through pre and post testing and validated studies is that we have a 59% more likely to be interested in STEM careers after using Learning Blade. <clears throat> I love the 140% more likely to now say they know what STEM workers do. Back to my, you can't be what you can't see. Um, in Arkansas specifically, where computer science was very much studied, we had a 61% increase in kids being interested in a computer science career after using Learning Blade. You can see these other data, you know, recognizing math is, use, is helpful. Um, my personal favorite, um, favorite piece of data, I feel like I need a t-shirt, I say this every time, is that 69% increase in kids saying, what I learn in school will be useful later in life. Relevance, relevance, relevance. I mean, that's why we're all in education. You know, every kid says, when will I ever use this math or when will I ever do this? Like, right. So that is a really, really bonus to have that in there. And again, just having kids really willing to consider and take higher levels of math in high school because they can't decide what they can, but it would be difficult when they're a senior, all of a sudden they want to go on a STEM career and they didn't take the right math that puts them behind the eight ball. So really showing them earlier and getting them interested in doing that is very, very effective. Um, our accomplishments are nationally recognized. We partner with Battelle, many of you may know, largest nonprofit research institution. They were our first partner to really validate our studies and, and what we were doing. STEMWorks National Database by Wested. We are an accomplished um, material listed in that. And then we have a partner which partnership with the National Rural Education Association, working with them right now to implement Learning Blade in five rural communities across the entire country that was supported by Battelle. Quickly, just to talk about CTE, and, and I don't know, maybe people can raise their hands on their computer or whatever and tell us if you are a CTE teacher or involved in that. Um, career and technical education. So if you are, you probably know about the Perkins Five. Um, and, and what the Perkins Five recently put into place was Section 135B1 that said we needed to now provide career exploration and career development activities in, it, for students, including middle grades. Normally it was more in high school and they have moved that down to middle school. I love to tell people like our states that have learning way can just go check. We got that covered because they are offering Learning Blade out to their middle schools all across the country. Um, just a little bit about our background. I don't know if there are any high school or post-secondary individuals who are on, or you might have heard of the ACT Work Piece Test. It is a career, the National Career Readiness Assessment that prepares people for the workforce. So we were the creators of the national curriculum for that called Key Train Career Ready 101. We worked in most, a lot of the states that we're working in today, but more in the high school and post-secondary environment. And mainly we share that with you to let you know that we have a long history, 24 years in the education market and e-learning really kind of evolving with the e-learning tool. So we always love to hear from our, our clients. If you guys 
ways for learning way to improve. We encourage you very much to um, come along and send us emails. I know we're going to talk, I'm going to turn over to Joshua in a second, but I did want to let you know so that if you're on and you are not aware of this, Alabama, Arkansas, Missouri, South Carolina, and Tennessee, Learning Blade is paid for and you can have it for free tomorrow. So if you are in any one of those states, you just have to go to the form that I've got listed here, learningblade.com slash your state abbreviation, and you will, you will go to a form that you will fill out, and then you will be receiving your Learning Blade account this week. If you would like to learn more about Learning Blade and you're not one of those states, we just encourage you to reach out to us at info at learningblade.com. And, um, and just really, again, on behalf of the Learning Blade team, I just want to really, you know, thank you as teachers for what you're doing. It is, it is so important, so important. And, you know, we, we're talking a lot about learning loss and a lot of things. So we want to make sure that we can provide some resources that will help you. I'm going to stop there and turn it over to Joshua, but also just were there any questions in here burning, Kirby, that we need to answer? Regina had a good question about which grades uh, Learning Blade is best used with. Yeah, so typically it is, um, it, it's aligned to fifth through ninth grade, but we really consider our sweet spot, spot to be seventh and eighth. Um, so that is our sweet spot, but we have lots of teachers that use it in fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, even some tenth. Um, particularly for RTI and other things, and sometimes for gifted in fifth grade, but really our sweet spot, I, I would say, is seven to eight. Anything else, Kirby? That was the only other question in the chat box I saw. Okay. Great. You've probably been answering that. Kirby keeps us all in line. Mm -hmm. So I am thrilled to turn it over to Joshua Snydeman, who is our vice president and head of implementation. Joshua is also a rock star. He actually is a 10 year middle school teacher. So he's been in the trenches as well in three different countries. And then he also served as the Department of Energy Einstein fellow in doing STEM education with them all across the country. So we've been very fortunate to have Joshua join our team several years ago and lead our implementation team. Um, and I think that's part of the reason we see such great usage for our tools. And again, on behalf of myself um, and Dane, thank you so much for attending this webinar. Hope you can attend tomorrow as well. And I'm going to turn over the floor to Joshua. Thank you, Sheila. Great job. And yes, tomorrow's, tomorrow's even more exciting than today. So I really encourage you guys to attend tomorrow. Um, I know all the speakers that are speaking and they have amazing stories and they're different stories to hear. So I'd like to actually just tell a quick story and then I'm gonna log in and show you Learning Blade. Yesterday, I was on a webinar for the Department of Education, um, National Department of Education in DC. And they told two things that I, I wanna just relate to you. One was that low SES students in the country are becoming less interested in STEM. And I think that's an alarming statistic, especially because STEM is so exciting. And so we gotta make sure we're bringing STEM into, this, in, into their ex, uh, student experiences. And when they talked about that in the webinar yesterday, what they, they gave a metaphor that I just thought was, was beautiful. Uh, the metaphor was, you know the game where you blow up a balloon and you play, keep the balloon in the air and you pass it around? Um, that's kind of what STEM is like. Students get that initial experience where they love this STEM experience. They did this hands-on project. They're really excited, but we got to keep the balloon in the air. And one of the ways to keep the balloon floated is for all students is to make sure we're having a variety of experiences of uh, you know, uh, a large plethora of opportunities for learning about different career paths in STEM. And I think that's where Learning Blade is definitely, it's like lots of different hands keeping the balloon afloat because there's so many different opportunities to learn about STEM careers in Learning Blade. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna log in and show you, take you on a live tour. I do wanna just point out that we are, uh, we are synced up with Clever Schools. So if your school's a Clever District, we can work with that. Schools that have class link, we can connect with them. Uh, we're very soon going to be uh, connecting uh, with some more platforms as well. So, uh, but we also have just a web-based login, which is what I'm going to model right now. I'm going to log in at first with my teacher password, but I, I want to show you a new feature for some of the teachers. There is a button right at the top that allows me to switch over to the student view. So this is nice if you're Zooming with your students. 
you can just you know show them this uh, this demo of a student view. So what I'd like to do is just orient you to the student experience. Uh, there's a dashboard, which is actually where the students can see their, their, uh, their scores. They can be put into teams. So you can have teams competing. So that's part of the gamification. They can also see their position in the score of the mission and how they're doing. On the My Missions page, this is where students launch the mission. And actually, teachers have control of what this page looks like. The default setting is for teach students to see all the missions and all the activities. But some teachers in the younger years, maybe in sixth grade, um, they, they only want them to see the mission that they're assigning this quarter, this semester. And so you do have an option of what, what tiles are on the screen. So I wanna log in and show you a lesson. I'm gonna start with Hack Attack. Um, as Sheila mentioned earlier, the full mission is about 10 hours of interdisciplinary academic work. The uh, express mission is about two hours. So I'm going to go and log into that full mission. And there's the tools and there's the teammates. It actually, you can bounce around inside of the mission. No one lesson uh, predates another. So you, there's no particular order in which you complete the assignments within the Learning Blade tools and teammates. And I want to go look at the information security analyst, which is a really um, high demand career in the 21st century. And also there's a lot of those careers come out of community college. So it can be both that community college four-year degree. And as you can see here, there's that interdisciplinary English lesson is about 15 minute lesson. If I were a hacker, social studies lesson, it could happen to you. So these are digital literacy, learning about protecting your personal identifiable information. And then this really fun math lesson, which I'm gonna show you spreading the bugs. So the, the lessons in Learning Blade are all approximately, you know, about 20 to 30 pages long. The number of stars show you the number of academic questions the student will be asking. And our platform is based on reading informational text. That is what we really fundamentally believe is the college and career ready skill that all students need. And so we've developed the platform to not only expose students to STEM careers and technologies, but to reinforce fundamental uh, skills in, in learning. I've heard of actually a lot of CTE teachers when they talk about Learning Blade, they actually say it's so great because in the CTE classes, they're always looking for ways to build on literacy and build on numeracy. And here's a great example. So there is a audio track on every page. You can turn the audio on and off. Uh, and then the students will read through the pages. In this case, uh, we're going to talk about, use a metaphor of spreading a bug on a doorknob, um, how appropriate for our times. Uh, but really convert that into talking about, you know, PCs and how a bug spreads from one computer to rapidly can infect an entire system, if not millions of computers. So students will, again, keep reading and learning a little bit about the career of information security analysts and what they do and how they try and prevent the spread of infections. Uh, in this case, we're talking about, you know, reading about viral videos on Snapchat and viral pictures and how that happens. And so, you know, asking some academic questions. I like our academic questions, particularly because it's f helping students pay attention and focus, which as you know, from the Twitter screen, you know, sharing that students do, they've lost that ability to really zone in on text and answer the question um, really specifically and correctly. So the students are going through, every question is followed by the correct answer which is something we're hearing from teachers that is really wonderful for asynchronous learning, that their students are getting instantaneous feedback on their performance in the lesson and they're learning, um, you know, so they're getting that feedback so they can keep going through the lesson. So now we're gonna get into some of the math elements of this lesson, looking at interpreting graphs, exponential growth, uh, looking at, you know, um, uh, in this case, we're looking at period doubling. So now we want to figure out what would be the number of shares on its uh, next iteration. And so I'm getting them right. The next time I'll try and get the question wrong to show you that the, the program is giving students um, correct feed, feedback so they can go on and look into the uh, getting the answer correct. Students have two tries. That was actually as I would understand from Sheila's uh, story of the uh, beginnings of Learning Blade, Battelle actually encouraged Learning Blade 
to put in multiple attempts to build that resiliency in students. And so that is a, an element of learning blade that every question students have multiple tries. Keep in mind, students are logged in individually. And so right now as a teacher, I can pull a report and see how my students are doing on this lesson um, in learning blade. Look at the number sentence and try again. So I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like it's thir three to the sixth. And so we're, we're getting some, some math skills, but in the context of a computer science scenario, which I think is really, as a former math, middle school math teacher, you know that the problems in a math textbook are just disjointed, disconnected. One problem is about a, a bake sale and the next problem is about driving a school bus or the next problem, they're not really um, you know, linked with a story. In this case, the math problems are being connected through a story of you know, viruses and spreading bugs and so on and so forth. And so that's what you're seeing here. This is a math lesson. Uh, there's over a hundred of these types of lessons, one for every single career in Learning Blade. In fact, when Sheila was showing you the data on the success of Learning Blade and helping students realize that math is helpful in solving real world problems, I like to think about it this way. Every single career and technology in Learning Blade has a math lesson. So the message to students is, hmm, I guess math will be useful in almost all of, of what career choices that I have before me. So I do like to show two examples. So that was, that was one lesson. So students, uh, I think of Learning Blade as a giant buffet of opportunity for teachers and students. They can explore careers, explore lessons. Um, I'm gonna switch over to a lesson that I really like. Our dolphin rescue lesson has something about biomedical engineers. So here's a career about biomedical engineers. What is a biomedical engineer? And as we get into this lesson, uh, we're gonna learn about the different elements of engineering um, and some of the developments that biomedical engineers have made throughout time. So learning about the term engineering, and actually it's interesting, I, I find that students think of engineering sort of as a monolithic thing, right? Because in STEM, it's science, technology, engineering, and math. But engineering, as Sheila showed on the slide earlier, has so many subcategories. We really want to make sure students are seeing that diversity of opportunities in the STEM workforce. So reading about and learning about mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, um, chemical engineers, and what the difference is between research and different fields that can be applied, and then getting students to try and answer an academic question. In this case, I'm gonna actually get it wrong uh, twice just to show you what happens. So if I get it wrong, I have to try again. I can't go forward. If I get it wrong twice, um, I can now move forward in the lesson, but I've been graded. I've lost my, my points on that, uh, on that question. And obviously it's, um, my score has gone down. And so we're asking other questions here. Let's see, let's try and get this one right. Allow scientists to anticipate how a new product or material will react with the human body. Study of orderly methodical, methodical way, living things and, ooh, I might've got that one wrong, yeah. So I'm gonna correct my answer, there we go. So just trying to show you the diversity of question types in Learning Blade. Fill in the blanks are one of our uh, most treacherous where students, stick out, you got to spell it right. So make sure they're uh, doing their spelling right. You notice I'm getting gold stars on the bottom of the questions here. Um, so, uh, and, I, and so there's just a variety of opportunities and lessons here. I just want to move on because I do like this next question where it's going to start showing some of the amazing achievements in biomedical engineering. So telling these real life stories, you know, of things that were created by engineers in the biomedical field and getting students to recognize that STEM careers are helping solve real world problems. So that's just two of 400 lessons. There's really, there's so many lessons in Learning Blade, as Sheila was saying. So I think that's an incredible opportunity. It also provides an opportunity for multiple classes, and multiple grades to implement the program. We have schools that use this in all, every middle school grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Um, you know, definitely in high school, ninth grade, Career development is a great is a great class that uses Learning Blade a lot. So different classes and different 
uh, settings. I, I sort of think of it as a Swiss army knife where there's lots of different ways it can be implemented. One of my favorite implementation strategies uh, and a bunch of schools do this, uh, they found they, they all uh, tried the same strategy without communicating with each other, but it's Learning Blade Fridays where once a week for 15 minutes when students come to class, they're gonna start with a career lesson to make sure middle school students are getting that context for STEM careers. Another one of my favorite um, ways of integrating Learning Blade is for early finishers. We have early finishers in grade in math class and science class and English. So as grade level teens can bond together and say, hey, let's use Learning Blade as one of our early finisher activities because it's, it's checking so many boxes, the career awareness, the interdisciplinary cross synapse firing um, tool. So that's just two of my favorite. I could go on uh, for a whole hour on implementation strategies. And in fact, I'd like to. So if any of you wanna talk about that, you can just email us at info at Learning Blade, and we would love to do that. Let me just throw up a quick poll, make sure people are still paying attention. I got a new poll here. Um, oh, how do I do this? Learning Blade question number two. I'm gonna launch it. I'm kind of curious. Are your students currently distance learning? Are you um, all full, full in class? Are you doing rotations one or two days a week? Um, or are you teaching both in-person and distance learners? Look at that. There's such a large percentage of you that teach both in-person and distance. That is, that is teachers juggling um, so much this, this year. And I, I feel for you and I'm, I'm thankful. So uh, yeah, 51% um, of you, I'll, I'll just share the results real quick if I can. So 51% of you are, are teaching uh, distance learners um, and a lot of you are doing both in-person and distance. That is, um, thank you for all of your efforts. So um, stop the share of results, close that. And now what I'd like to do is quickly, I got just a little bit of time left. The My Lessons page is what your teacher has assigned to you. You can see this student has nothing assigned. And then the resources page, students have resources, those design thinking, those home discussions with parents, those mission challenges. And I'll show you more when I get to the um, teacher view. So I'm back on my teacher view. And it's, this is a, just a quick training tip. As soon as you get your Learning Blade account, what you can do is click on classes and create a new class. And so let's say I'm doing Learning um, Blade 1.0 today, I create a new class and instantaneously it creates a class code. And so that class code can be used to get your students to log into the system and really get started. And I see Kirby uh, added to the chat box, the lesson outlines. Um, that is, a that when I do in-person trainings, I bring that and I say to teachers, just take out a highlighter, read through this. And in five minutes, I guarantee you'll find 10 or 20 lessons you would like to start using. So now that I've created this class, let me just show you what you can do. So once you've created a class, you can actually add assignments to the class. So you can click the assignments and add assignments. So you can add a whole mission. Hey students, I think I want you to finish um, the dolphin rescue mission or an express mission, maybe the intro to computers or the lightweight express mission. And I can populate their inbox with work I want them to do. But you could also just go to the buffet and maybe you want to look for engineering careers. You're a lot of project lead the way teachers use Learning Blade for the engineering lessons. And maybe you want to assign a couple engineering lessons this week. And then the last one is the standards. And I really just want to, want to re reiterate, we are aligned to all 50 state standards. So you can come here and choose your state. I know we've got some, some uh, colleagues from New York on the call. I could come to New York standards. Or, or any state and choose them. And then when you click on the standard, it actually reminds you what that standard is. And now you can go search for it. So let's say I want to do volume of cones and cylinders, 8.g.9. Um, I can search for that standard and I can find the lessons in Learning Blade that reinforce the volume of cones and cylinders and spheres. And so, so teachers use Learning Blade really from both directions. Some are using the content, the career base, the exploration, the supplementing enrichment that way. There are definitely science teachers, math teachers, um, uh, just you know, teachers that are using the standards and say, I, I wanna reinforce the standard I'm teaching. And so there, there's another way of coming about it. And so then Josh, 
Yes. Josh, sorry to interrupt, but um, Lori has a good question in the chat box that I think might fit with what you're talking about right now, but she would like to learn a tip from you about how to figure out which missions would be good for fifth grade. Great question. So, um, and Lori, uh, if you can also put your email, I can follow up more in depth with that. I have a whole series of recommendations for the younger grades. One of those is, and let me just highlight a couple things. I didn't show this earlier. Inside of every mission on the teammates, we also have video lessons. So every single teammate has a video lesson. And the video lesson is actually to, um, to, to read a little bit, to watch the video, and then to check for understanding that you understood the video. So here we're reading about biomedical engineers. Here we're watching a video about biomedical engineers. And then we're answering academic questions about what we learned. So that's one of the first strategies I say in the younger years is get into those video lessons, really expose students and try more with the express missions because you know fifth graders aren't used to 10 hour long activities. So thank you Kirby for that question and, and Lori for that question. Okay, I have two more things to show you in the classes section. I just wanna show you that there's reports. Um, oops, uh, you can click on reports and you can click curriculum report or standards report and you can see your student performance. You can see every student in the class, how they did on every single lesson. And so I know with uh, distance learning, this is a nice way of seeing who's doing their work when they're at home. It is tabulating and calculating for you that, that part of the, um, of the work. And also for those teachers that are juggling so many things, uh, I personally would love a program that does some of the grading for me. This is filling in my grade book. It's, it's, it's lowering my necessity to grade so I can maybe plan some awesome Zooms or some awesome other things, but I know I'm getting feedback on student performance. All right, and then the teacher resources page. I wish I had a whole nother hour. I only have about five minutes, but in the teacher resources page, when you get your account, there's training videos, there's resources here, but this is where Sheila, when she was talking about earlier, we have lessons for 3D printers and all of our lessons are experiments that are meant to gather, collect data and allow students to tinker. I'll rapidly show you our wind turbine one. It's so cool. Um, so the wind turbine one has students designing blades for the turbine using 3D printing files and then testing to see is Lori's design better than Penny's design or not better or is better than their first design? So maybe Josh does three designs and sees, you know, through data collection, which one is the best design. And so you can count rotations or a quick thing with windmills is you put a string on it. And when it rolls up a meter of string, you know that you've completed, you can do calculations on that. Anyway, so that's 3D printable lessons. Uh, here's our coding and computational thinking that she was talking about the Boy Scouts. We designed that and then de Boy Scouted it. One of these is great. It's about doing what I call cyber physical. So putting out puzzle pieces on the floor and having students map how to get to the treasure, but with drag and drop coding, but in a physical way, in a real world physical setting, and then take that over to your Scratch programming or your Scratch Junior. Our design thinking lessons, our five-step engineering design process. I have a personal favorite. Um, uh, they're all cool. They're all very good. But our fresh food one is what I, I saw this once at the STEM and we've incorporated it, is called the potato chip challenge. You give students, we've all heard of the egg drop, but give students a single Pringle, a parabolic potato chip, and then say, build a container that will protect your potato chip. And you can challenge it a bunch of different ways. You could send it through the US Post Service and see if it survives. You could tell them to keep it in their backpack for a week, see if it survives. Um, so you can work your way around the challenge, but the idea is to use recyclable materials to build a protective container for your oh so precious Pringle. And these have um, resources on food preservation and other funny videos and interesting um, you know, ways for students to learn more about packaging. And then it's gonna ask them to go through a five-step process where they sort of gather their inspiration. You know, maybe there's a story about why this Pringle is so important. They define the problem, right? It's delicate and they go through a defining the situation. And then they're gonna go into creating their, hypo their, their brainstorm map, their prototypes, and then test it. So we've got all sorts of 
different ways of engaging students when they have finished the Learning Blade lessons online. And then we have mission challenges. Uh, these are actually, every mission challenge is four lessons, an open-ended writing prompt, generally a group discussion and conversation, a hands-on build it, do it, and then some sort of variable what, on what it could be. Some are games, some are um, challenges. But if I went to, just as an example, our manufacturing a concept car, this one is to build a rubber band car. So one of them is to uh, facilitate a discussion. I, this is an interesting classroom conversation. The impact of robotic workers, the robots have on workers in a factory, right? So let's, let's one side take the pro, one side take the con and, and discuss the impacts of workers in the, in the workplace. Here's our build a rubber band car. I went to one school that built a uh, rubber band monster trucks and they spray painted them. It was, it was awesome. Um, and so we have fun lessons here and then some math activities as well. So our mission challenges are four additional lesson plans. So as you can see from the resources page, there's just a lot of additional stuff that you can do. Those parent paper craft that Sheila was talking about, Minecraft fold up, fold ups. Um, students, some teachers love this. It's really probably more for the younger grades, but you know, sixth graders, my, my sixth graders crazy about Minecraft still. So you can, every career in Learning Blade has a Minecraft thing. Um, and also the technology fold up puzzle piece. So, and then those parent discussions. So I'm realizing we're hitting the wall, two minutes left. Um, questions, Kirby, questions, anyone? Uh, we, for those states that Sheila mentioned and for our, we're also working with Battelle and some of the national labs, I hope you're on the call. Um, you know, training is included. So we just want to email us info at Learning Blade and say, can you do a training for my team or for, for me, help me log in and get set up? Give me a time and date and our team, we've got a team of trainers that can help support that. So we're so excited for the growth of Learning Blade and, and that you guys are on this call. I just got to end by saying, uh, tomorrow's going to be, it's, today you saw what Learning Blade is, tomorrow you're going to hear some amazing teachers. We have the STEM Educator of the Year for South Carolina talking about how she uses it for project-based learning in such a unique way. Um, we have a multi-million dollar grant in Kentucky talking about how they use it for computer science. So just some really incredible discussions. And so I hope you can join tomorrow. The link is still, registers, registration is still open. So please feel free to share the link that Kirby put in the box. And then Kirby, were there any questions in the last minute or two here? No, I think everything has been answered in the chat box. There were a few folks that wanted um, to connect with you directly. So I grabbed that from the chat box. Yeah. And my email, um, I'll get that out too directly. It's joshua at learningblade.com. I'm happy to, to meet and talk with any of you. Um, that's also my pleasure. And sorry, Kirby, you were still, I'm, an inter I'm a serial interrupter. <laughs> I'm used to it, Josh. <laughs> no, you guys have been great. Um, I did also want to mention uh, this is something for our folks that really just jump in and get um, get going on Learning Blade very quickly, but it's not too late to start this, is that we do give out a free th 3D printer to our schools that reach a 3,000 lesson milestone this year. Um, that's a Flash Forge USA printer, and we use it in our office. Everybody loves it. Um, so you can learn more about that tomorrow night on the user group as well. Josh just threw up all the topics that we're covering tomorrow night, but you can tell it's a really great assortment of really relevant topical uh, information for our educators across the United States. So we certainly hope that you can join us. And I'm also, Josh, I'm going to throw up those, um, those links again. So if folks want to um, yeah, the register, register for an account, they've got it right yeah. there. And, and uh, just two things on the 3D printers. You know, if you've got, you know, 200 kids in your middle school, you can you can win that in two weeks, three weeks. I've, I've had schools in the first week of school, they won a 3D printer. Others take a month or two months or three months. And, and if you don't reach that goal, it's okay. You obviously are doing STEM integration. And then the other thing I want to say is just on this number five, that's the one I'm moderating tomorrow. Um, 
Dr. Elaine Swafford took a bottom five school and made it the top five school in the country in, in the state of Tennessee. And it's all about using data. She's just a she has a data war room. It's going to be so exceptional that conversation. You know, James Wilson and Misty Cudlitz are incredible CTE teachers. Um, Tracy Elmore is the STEM educator of the year in South Carolina. Brandy Kristovich is a is a um, code.org trainer who loves learning blades hack attack lessons for her class along with Linda Stone, who's got those grants in Kentucky. And then Diedrich McGee and Amy Polonowski are going to really, you know, talk about how to expand participation in STEM. So please join us tomorrow. You've got our emails. I want to thank everyone for sticking around and uh, have a great evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, everyone. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'll stay on. If anyone wants to un unmute and ask questions, I'll also just stay on this call for a little bit. Kirby, real quick, can you grab the chat box and, and copy that out too? And Dawn, um, I see that you wanted a promo fire on the 3D printer. If you want to hang on for just a minute, I'll grab it for you. Um, so just hang out and I will post it in the chat box for anybody that's still on the call. Any questions about anyone that's uh, hanging out on the participants? So, Lori, you teach fifth grade? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So, um, in fifth well, grade, um, a lot of schools use it for enrichment for their, G, for their you know, uh, gifted and talented students or their accelerated students. That's actually, I'm a gifted and talented teacher. Okay. Um, I actually teach second through fifth grade. Okay. So, but... So yeah, the entire city of Huntsville, Alabama uses it for their fifth grade, I think GT program or a lot of the teachers do. So I think that's, I think it's a good fit for fifth grade GT The obviously you saw the reading component. It can, it can be yeah. above grade level for your general education student, but you know, yeah. in small reading groups with teacher guided reading, there's lots of, lots of strategies to use learning. Blades. Right, right. Yeah. And I have a lot of my gifted students are reading, you know, several grade levels above. <laughs> Yes. And so, so that's, that's where, yeah. you know, there's, so, so then beyond the videos, I think the English, the social studies lessons are more reading and less applied math. So you might have a GT student that's reading at eighth, ninth grade, mm -hmm. but maybe not doing math at eighth, ninth grade. So you might, you might use those math as the last, the last lesson to complete. Gotcha. Okay. So where would some, like, where would you suggest somebody start that's just going to, you know, start using this program? Well, so I had a great conversation with a GT teacher yesterday. Um, I think, and obviously in those programs, you're trying, you, you're, it's an element of choice with those students, right? Yeah. So I can send you a couple flyers, but you know, if you took our mission diagram, Kirby put it in there earlier and you, and you gave each student a copy and you said, you know, choose five careers that are interesting to you, right? Those are the five I want you to go look at, right? So it's not, okay. it might not always be finish every mission. It might be, Let's 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 hit the hammer with the nail, the nail with the hammer that you want to hit, and that'll be a different nail for different students. So definitely, right. the uh, I think the a la carte approach for student self exploration is also a great you know bounce around and and but then have some accountability, right? Right. Okay. You got to finish an express mission, or you need to finish five careers and get write up a report on which career mm -hmm. was most interesting. You know, some sort of beyond just bouncing around, but. Mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely think there's there's just so many integration strategies. Um, another just quick suggestion, Lori, would be to have your team of GT students say which mission looks most interesting, do mm -hmm. a survey and say, look, we're gonna start with that one. You guys voted for it, you know? Okay, Yeah. all right, thank you. Yeah. Crystal had a cool idea that she just shared in the chat box, which is to make a bingo card for it. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, there was a teacher in Idaho. She was the STEM teacher of the year, a teacher of the year in Idaho. She uses a bingo card with Learning Blade, where she puts different lessons on a bingo card and does that. So um, that is a great idea. I, I also just want to add for everybody that's still on, Josh is our VP of Implementation. So I'll toot his horn for a minute. But he, like you said earlier, is a former educator and just a wonderful resource for Learning Blade. And he makes himself available all year long to you guys. So if you have a question you think is silly, or if you want to spend an hour with him talking 
implementation strategies. That's really what he gets paid to do. So I threw his email in the chat box. I'll uh, copy paste it one more time, but certainly reach out to him if you need anything. I'll also provide my email in case um, as a backup, but we are here for you uh, to get you started and to get you utilizing Learning Blade in the best way possible for your I don't know if anyone's in South Carolina. I didn't want to pitch it during the main presentation, but in South Carolina, South Carolina STEM, STEM month starts on um, March 14th. And we're giving away a 3D printer to the school that uses Learning Blade the most that month. So, you know, it's not too late to, you, you don't even need to hit 3000 in South Carolina. You can just win a 3D printer. All right, well, we're gonna shut down the room if there aren't any more questions and just uh, can't wait to see everyone tomorrow.